Hello folks, welcome to part three of my Harper's Quest 2 playthrough. If you haven't seen part one, I'll pop a link up in the corner of the screen right about now, and there'll be links to part one and part two in the description below. I am the Lone Adventurer, thank you very much for stumbling your way upon my channel and joining me for this adventure. If you enjoy it, do consider subscribing to my channel, hitting the bell and notification icon so you find out when new videos are released, and liking this video if you like this video. So in the first part of this playthrough, we ran through character creation and quest and adventure creation. We established that our quest for our character of Ferric, who is a woodcutter. His quest is to go into this haunted woods where his father has been taken, turned into some kind of zombie-like creature by a cyclops hag that lives in the caves deep in the forest. Ferric made his way through the forest, going through a number of different areas, narrowly avoiding an encounter with three demonic boar, which probably wouldn't have gone his way, and then managing to kill three zombies before entering this final location and finding the entrance to the cave. So this quest has two main areas. The first area was this forest, and the second area is going to be this cave. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go into the cave and we're going to search through the various rooms of the cave and hopefully find the Cyclops hag and take her down, releasing my father from the spell. Now before we start, there are a couple of uh, rules that I didn't get quite right, so I'm just going to quickly go over those. Thanks to the people who uh, commented on the previous videos, including uh, Joy Peddler Games themselves, pointing out a few bits and pieces that I got wrong. It was really helpful to get that feedback because I think these are all things that are going to just improve my enjoyment of the game. So firstly, when you roll your attack ceiling in combat, when you roll exactly your attack ceiling, you gain momentum. I wasn't doing that, so I think I missed out on a couple of opportunities to gain momentum as a result of that. Next up we have searching. Now I think at one point I did comment that I was unsure about when to search a room and it has been pointed out that you search a room when there is something in the room that warrants searching. And I'm sure I've read this at some point in the rule book, but I can't find it right now. But essentially, if you are in an area, a room that has a cupboard in it, or uh, an abandoned bag or satchel, then those items can logically be searched. And at that point, you can do a search using the item search oracle here and potentially find something useful. Next up is distraction spells. Now, I only cast one spell in the last quest area, but I did mark it down as one of my um, three spells for that area. Now, I didn't have to do that because distraction is an unlimited cast spell, so you don't have to record that, and it doesn't count towards your three maximum spells that you can cast. Skill checks. I had been using 3d6, which is not the case. That's just when you are generating your um, stats. When you are uh, doing something that requires skill, you choose the attribute and you roll d20. So I'm going to start doing that and that will probably make skill checks ever so slightly more challenging. And the final thing, which isn't going to affect this playthrough, but is worth mentioning nonetheless, is that uh, the starting items, uh, you get two items from the item shop at no cost. 
So I'm a little bit disappointed that I didn't do that. Should I do it now? Should I give myself a bonus item? Because I didn't do that, I thought that you had to purchase these items. So do you know what? I'm going to give myself one now. I'm not going to give myself two because I should have worked that out at the start of the quest. But let's say I find something. Fen Ferric finds something in this clearing before he goes into the cave just to give us something else to play with, since we were supposed to do this anyway. So this is a D12 roll. So let's see what we're going to get. 11. Oh, look at that. This has given us the most expensive item on the table. Plus one to all non-magical damage. Wow. I'll take it. Fine. All good. Okay, so before we get started, the other thing we need to do is find out a little bit more about the boss, about the Cyclops hag. So if we turn to creating enemies and look at the bosses section, and we can see that, oh, clues have just seen that you can collect three clues throughout the quest and that will give you some information about the boss's weakness. I do seem to remember saying at some point I didn't see what the point of clues was. It says here, usually should not be taken on alone or without first discovering their weakness. Well at the moment I'm alone and I haven't discovered the boss's weakness and I'm quite far from doing that because I don't have any clues at all. But never mind, let's have a look at generating the stats for the boss. So we'll write those here at the bottom of the table. So to generate the attack ceiling, we're going to roll 4d6 and subtract the lowest. That's pretty high. That's pretty high. So attack ceiling of 15. HP 4d6 hopefully not too high okay that's all right 8 9 10 11 12 and does d12 damage but we don't yet know ah so we get a boss detail I'm just trying to decide whether I should use one of these details or make up my own one that feels more relevant I'm going to roll a dice, see what we get. We need an eight-sided dice. There's one. Five. So this would give us can, hover, or fly. Must hit with ranged attack before melee. Do I have a ranged weapon? I don't think I do. I don't have a ranged weapon. Does that include magic hits? Probably you could use magic hits, right? All right, well, we'll stick with that. We will say the Cyclops hag can fly. And we'll say that can be a, a magic attack as well as a, a ranged attack. I think that's a fair thing to do. So hopefully we will get a companion or we will find some clues so we can find out the weakness of the Cyclops hag. But with that done, I think it's probably time to get into this new area. So I've got a new blank piece of paper, and we're gonna have the entrance to the cave here. And how many exits are we gonna have from this entrance area? Three exits, that's good, gives us some options. So these caves are gonna be formed from eight rooms plus the boss room so it's ever so slightly larger than the last quest we went on but still uh, hopefully quite manageable so the first thing we need to do in this first area is find out what the room contents are has it got a trap has it got an npc has it got an enemy do you know what i, I knew it was going to be that. So we've got an enemy in this first room. What kind of enemy? Five. So that is the elite enemy. Our elite enemy is the demonic boars. So we almost encountered some in the forest, but we managed to sneak past them. How many demonic boar have we got? 
two. Two demonic boar. So do I fight them or do I try and be a sneaky sneaker? I think probably I'm going to try and be a sneaky sneaker because I don't want to die in the first room. And demonic boars do d10 damage. My health is five. Oh wow! I need to re. I need to heal, don't I? Do I get to heal in between areas? No, it would appear you do not. You get to heal between quests, so you can restore your health, visit a town, and do some other stuff in between quests, but not in between quest areas. So I am on five health, which is quite low. I do have one healing potion, which clearly I'm going to have to use. I wish I had more than that. But that's what I've got at the moment. Yeah, so I think we're going to try and avoid the combat with this enemy. So my options are to try and sneak by the boar, bash on through using my strength, or distract using wisdom, which was what I did last time. So I think we will do the same thing again to these two boar. Worked the first time, why not try it again? So let's try and distract them by using my wisdom. Oh, cast distraction, I see. Okay, so let's try and do exactly what we did last time, which is casting distraction. To do that, I need to roll under my wisdom on a d20, I think. So let's give it a go, shall we? Um, we need to roll at 13 or less. One. That'll do it, won't it? So we are able to distract the boar. I guess I probably pick up, or rather Ferric picks up a little handful of gravel, chucks it over to the other side of the cave, and that distracts them so that they run Actually, do, uh, let's, let's do a little roll on that. Are they distracted to the degree where they um, leave the area? Or are they just distracted enough so that I am able to uh, creep through? Because I want to search the area, but at the moment I don't think that would be possible. So we have avoided a fight, which gives us a bonus of 200 gold pieces. So I'll just note that down. And let's roll. Are the boar distracted to the degree where they're going to leave the area? Yes, but. Ah, okay. So yes, but. Because I was going to have them go off down one of these routes. So how about yes, but they split up so that both of these Two of these roots will have boar in the next room. That would be annoying, I think. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just roll to see which of these uh, exits the boar take. One, two, or three. So the first one goes down there, and the second one goes down there. Okay. But that gives us one exit to go through, which will hopefully not be a dead end, because I am operating under the assumption that there could be some dead ends in these quest areas. But that gives us a way to go without any boar, so that's good. Let's see what is in this area. So now that we have dealt with the contents of the room, we can add a feature by rolling on the D66 feature table. Purple will be the first digit. 36. So this room... <laughs> has a large fireplace stroke pit filled stockings hang next to the fireplace. Not really what I expected to find in this cave. All right, so here's our fire pit and there's some stockings hanging next to the fire pit. All that I can imagine is that the Cyclops hag uh, has a sideline in luring unsuspecting village children into her cave and the, the sight of stockings is appealing 
to them and helps her in that endeavour. The fact that there's stockings mean that there is something we can search. Now, I've been trying to work out how clues work. When you get clues. Now, I can see that theoretically an NPC could give you a clue, but that's quite an unlikely situation. Here it says, collect clues by convincing NPCs to divulge or successfully search a room. So if I successfully search and get a five or a six, I, I would say those are the successful search options. Then that means not only do you get to do that table uh, roll, you also get a clue. Hopefully that's how it works. So I'm going to roll a d6 and hopefully get a 5 or a 6. A 1. Nothing useful. Alright, so we didn't find anything in the stockings that was particularly useful. So we're going to move on to the next area, which is going to be through here. How many exits is this area going to have? 3. Okay, good. So that means we don't have to, or we, we, we likely won't have to go back through the uh, exits that um, now have bore. Need to roll for contents. Two, that means the room is empty. Good, good. So that means no traps, no enemies. Let's roll to see what else is in the room. 55, gambling, dice cups, half full wine bottle. So I guess we've got a recently um, abandoned gambling den. I think I've just drawn a little gambling table with a couple of chairs around it. Now, I don't think I could reasonably search, um, but it'd be nice to do something. So we've got a half drunk bottle of wine. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wine. I'm going to do that. So let me just mark this as a gambling den. I'm going to take the bottle of wine. I'm not sure how useful that's going to be, but you never know, do you? And also, while we're here, I think I need to use my healing potion. So that gives me D10 plus 2 healing. It's quite a lot. And the maximum I can regain is 6 HP. The problem is, being so low, the chance of getting killed if I get into a combat situation is quite high. So I think I'm going to have to just go for it and um, use my healing potion. So let's see. Oh, oh, well, that's good. That's 10. That's 10. So basically, I'm going to heal up to max. So we're going to go back to 11. And we've got half a half full bottle of wine so that's something isn't it so let's uh let's go up this way so next area how many exits two so this is area three so let's roll for room contents five gives us an enemy what type of enemy it's boar. It's more boar. Getting a bit tired of boar now. How many boar? One. One boar. So we could try and avoid, but the risk with avoiding a fight is that if you fail to avoid it, you're put at a disadvantage, which gives you minus three to attack rolls, which is pretty bad. So there being only one boar, I'm wondering whether I should try and take it out. I might do that. Let's try and kill the boar. So, demonic boar have 10 HP. They have an attack ceiling of 14, which means they're trying to roll. So their attack ceiling... Oh, mine, mine's a bit better. But their attack ceiling is what they're trying to roll in order to attack me. And they do a brutal D10 worth of damage. So they could actually, this boar could kill me in one fell swoop. Alright, so I've, uh, alright, so Ferrick has walked into this room and has seen the boar. The 
standard process is for player characters to act first, so he's going to get to attack first, rolling a d20 and hoping to roll under his attack ceiling, which is 16. Here we go for the first attack. Uh, 17. That's not a successful hit at all. That's frustrating. Ferric heads in with his axe, tries to uh, axe the boar to the head, but slips and misses. So the boar is going to attack back and will be successful on a roll of 14 or less. Six. Right, so I'm going to have to try and do a defensive move, I think. So my best option is to try and distract the boar and hope to uh, deflect this attack this way. So to do this, I'm rolling at or below my wisdom. And I've done it. Brilliant. So a roll of 12 means that we're able to distract the boar and they fail in their attack. So we're going to go back to Ferric attacking the boar, hopefully rolling 16 or less. Three. Brilliant. So that means we can roll for damage using a d4 because I have a rubbish axe. If I had a better axe, I'd be rolling a higher dice. Okay, here we go. One. Disappointing. Very disappointing. So the boar is uh, grazed, but by no means out of the fight, not by a long stretch. So he's going to attack again. Oh, eight. That is a successful attack. So I need to try and defend. I need to try and defend. So I guess we could try and block this attack, which you're aiming to roll under your strength. Our strength is 11. So that doesn't feel too good. But the only other option is I just take the damage. So I think I've got to try. Ah, brilliant. One. That's good. That means I'm able to block the uh, strike and take no damage. Excellent. So let's try and hit them again. So we're trying to roll under our attack ceiling. Come on. 12. That is successful. Let's try and do some damage this time. 4. Fantastic. So 4 gives us momentum, which means we can roll again. One. Okay. All right. So we're doing a total of five damage. That's good. Means we only need to do four more damage. So now the boar is going to attack again. Probably getting increasingly angry at this point. And needs to roll 14 or less. Oh, 13. This boar is having a lot of luck. So once again, I am going to try and distract the boar. So remember, you can't do the same thing twice in a row, but because I blocked the last attack from the boar, it means I can go back and distract again. And we're trying to roll under our wisdom, which is 13, equal or under. Oh, 18 is a fail. Okay, so that means that we're going to roll for damage and I'm going to take two additional damage. So this could, this could kill me. So the uh, demonic boar rolls d10 damage. So I roll d4 damage and this boar rolls d10. Oh, two. <sighs> okay. So that takes us down to 9 HP. Let's have another go. So this is us attacking. We need to roll 16 or less. 7, that's good. How much damage are we doing? 2 points of damage. Not a huge amount. Man, this boar is tough. 
OK, then the ball's going to attack me, hopefully not rolling 14 or less. 11. OK, so we need to do a defensive move. We will try and block, which means rolling at or less than our strength, which is 11. Or oh, 3. So we successfully block. That's great. So let's go into another attack. Uh, five, that is less than our attack ceiling, which means we can do some damage. Two points of damage. That'll do it. That finishes the boar off. Oh my goodness. Well, that is an elite enemy, but it was definitely quite tough to, um, to kill. For an elite enemy, we get 400 gold pieces. Right, so let's have a look around this. Um, now that the uh, boar is destroyed, we can have a look around this area. See if there's anything in here that's worth um, snaffling. So we could ro let's roll on the room features and prompts table. 43. Hanging dot 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 and treasure what's dot 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 just something uh, shall we roll on the unusuals table maybe not how about we roll on the nouns table to give us some hint as to what is hanging so that's a d100 table Thirty-five insult. It doesn't quite make sense. Let's go to the next one. Corpse. Lovely. So there is a hanging corpse. And what was the other thing? Was it in treasure? That's good, isn't it? Like a bit of treasure. Yeah, treasure. So there's some treasure. There's a hanging corpse. Now, my thinking is that I get a roll on the treasure table but I can also search the hanging corpse because obviously my hope is that I'll find a clue that will help me defeat the um, final boss. So let's do an item search on the corpse. Four. Oh, underling attacks. Curses. Right, so we're gonna get attacked by some giant spiders. That's annoying. I think before I do that, I'm going to imagine that I did the treasure roll first, because if I don't do that, I'm going to forget to do the treasure roll. So let's do that now. 12 gives us a healing potion. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot to rub out my healing potion anyway. So that's great. That's exactly what I needed. So how many giant spiders are we dealing with here? One. Just the one giant spider. And I've just noticed, actually, we've got an enemy reaction um, table here, or oracle. And so that means that there's a chance that the enemy doesn't attack me, which I'll take as an option. So let's do that. As I'm searching the corpse, that disturbs the gigantic spider that was uh, hidden in the shadows in the in a rocky crevasse just above where the corpse is hanging. And the spider is suspicious of me, but does not attack. So I think I will just make a hasty retreat. We'll just make a note that there's a spider in here. So I've made a note that there's a suspicious spider above the corpse and that we searched the corpse, so we can't do that again, obviously. So I think what we'll do is we will explore one more area, and then we'll have a little break and come back in a fourth video to finish the quest, or die. Maybe Ferric will die, that's an option as well. But for now, let's go uh, through this exit here into a new area. How many exits does the new area have? Just the one. No, no, one we use as a dead end. So this is a dead end. 
So this is area four of nine. In this dead end, what do we have? Let's have a roll for room contents. One, it's empty. Okay, so at least there's no enemies in here. Uh, let's roll on the room features table to see if there's anything interesting in here. 55, that rings a bell. It's another gambling den. So I guess this hag is also sort of running a gambling enterprise out of the cave. I guess for the local goblins and orcs. Didn't quite see that coming. So we've got a couple of tables in here. I'm going to say that we can do a search, have a look under the tables, see if there's anything that's been dropped, anything useful that's been dropped by some of the gamblers. So let's have a look. Five gives us, oh no, not an enemy, almost panicked there. Five gives us a roll on the item table. Ah, so is that the... And that's a successful search, which gives us a clue as well. Great. So I guess the item table is the um, the item table here at the start of the book. So let's see what we're finding under one of the tables. Ten. Ooh, a shield. And tell you what, I'd totally forgotten about my whetstone, which gives plus one to non-magic damage. That's annoying. That would have helped with the boar, wouldn't it? But now I've got a shield as well. So we've got a shield which gives, which gives us minus one incoming damage. Ah, cool. We've got a little area for boss clues here. So we've discovered the first boss clue. So something that gave us some kind of hint as to a weakness of the Cyclops hag. Right, I think we will stop there four areas in, quite a few areas to go and a boss to defeat, but we'll leave it there for now. Hope you enjoyed that one, folks. Let me know in the comments below um, what you're thinking about this, how you think it's going, if I made any rules goofs, and I'll see you in the next one for the conclusion of this quest. Bye for now.